Recently, I've taken an interest in two amps and I've gone through about 22 amps. And uh, of course, eventually I will make a video on them. But because I've spent so much time with two amps, I figure today I will make a video and chat about what you should be aware of if you plan to buy a tube amp. Now regarding the benefits of tubes, I have already made another video on it and I will link it in my first comment. Now partially, this video is inspired by some of the comments and questions I get. For example, Thomas, I love the Wilsonton R8 tube integrated amp. Should I get the Wilsonton R800i tube integrated amp? Now on the surface, this seems like a legitimate question. The R8 is about 900 bucks and the Wilsonton R800i is about 2000. It seems like a reasonable question because if I have a BMW 3 Series car and I like to upgrade, I would look at the more expensive BMW 5 Series car. More money should buy you something better after all. However, with tube amps, I have to say it is not that simple. And today I'd like to make a video to give you something to think about if you plan to explore the world of tubes. Now this video is meant for beginners and before I begin I ask the expert to be a bit understanding Now I will generalize a lot and you can easily find examples to counter me but guys it's a 10-15 minute video so you know cut me some slack now I did however chat with my amp designers buddies before making this video and I've tried to simplify this video to the point where even a great school kid can understand so if you are looking at getting into tubes there are three important things you have to keep in mind now of course there are many more other things but i'm just going to focus on three things first there is a difference in sound between a single-ended and push-pull design now let me put up here on screen a drawing my audio buddy sent me okay single-ended in plain English is when one power tube handles the whole signal sine wave form. Now for example the Rysong A12 and Wilsonton R800i are single-ended. In a push-pull configuration you have more than one tube working together to produce the complete wave. So push-pull amps would be like Cayenne CS88, the Doge 10 and the Wilsonton R8. Now given you usually have four tubes or more in a push-pull configuration, you usually get more power and dynamics. Now, we can debate which one is better between single-ended and push-pull designs. For example, such as, I know, single-ended has a very low crossover distortion because it is the same tube, one tube, that amplifies all the signal. But, you know what? That's not the point of today's video. All you need to know is for some people single-ended sounds better while others would prefer push-pull okay you just have to know which one you belong to in my experience in general okay i found opera jazz and vocals are better with single-ended while pop and orchestra music are better with push-pull i personally find single-ended class a overall presentation is lean but the mid-range has body the mid-range is linear and very clean. Some people will even use the word pure to describe the single-ended Class A sound. Now, I know it means nothing to the people who have never heard single-ended amps, but for those of you who have had heard it, the word pure will click. Next, single-ended Class A amps bass is usually not bloated, so it does tend to be very nuanced, but not particularly fast. You see, I'm not saying single-ended is better, but I just want to highlight the point that it is different than push-pull. Now, beyond that, there's also the difference between Class A and Class AB sound, but I'll explore that topic in a future video instead. 
Now, the second thing you have to be aware of is each tube has its own unique sound character. Now, I, I call it flavor. It's like, you know, a bit like vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. Now, for those of you who follow me, you know, I like to categorize things. So let's take speakers, for example. I would group them into analytical speakers or musical speakers. You know, just because I like to analyze things. Tubes for me are the same. I split tubes into three groups. Group one, killer mid-range. Group two, very good for voice and have decent power. Group three, decent voice and have very strong power. For me, the first group, the killer mid-range group, okay? I would say tubes like 300B, 2A3, 6L6, 6V6, 845, 45, and EL84. Group 2, which is good for voice and decent dynamics, EL34, KT66, and KT77. Finally, the last group that has the most power, KT88, KT120, 150, and 170. Now, once again, I'm generalizing here, but of course, the big question mark is, where does the AO5 tube found in the Wilsonton RA800i falls? Is it good for voice or is it good for dynamics or both? Well, you have to wait for my Washington R800i video because I'm still breaking it in. Now, the third thing you have to look at is the power. How many watts? If you're planning to go for single-ended low power amp, for example, then your speakers better be efficient, else you might be very disappointed. Okay? Take the Ryzen A10, for example. In my video, I said the only good thing about it is the mid-range. You know why? Because most people who buy it will not have a 96 dB plus efficient speaker. So they will not get a lot of bass and dynamics. So when they buy it, they might be wondering, hey, uh, where's the, the round bass that everybody's talking about? Or that 3D holographic sound stage? Yeah, well, they're not going to get that if they pair it with the wrong speakers. Okay, so why do you have to pay attention to the three things when deciding which two amp is right for you? Okay, so let's start with the, sing the first point, single-ended or push-pull. I remember getting an email once, a question, okay? And this person changed his system completely. And because of that, he bought new speakers and he had to get a more powerful tube amp. He changed from single-ended to push-pull amp, right? Because he needed more power. And then he was wondering, you know, why is the mid-range not as good as before, despite the push-pull amp that he just bought being a famous brand and have more power. See, that's one of the problems. If you like the single-ended sound, it might not be easy to find a push-pull design amp that will give you the same satisfaction. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it might be a bit difficult. If you love, love the single-ended Ryzen A12 mid-range, don't think you will love the mid-range as much after you upgrade to the push-pull Wilsonton R8 amp. Sure. R8 mid-range is fine, but you might want to be ready for the transition shock. That is why in my Ryzen A10 video I said, you know, all these push-pull two amps I've recently tried will run circles around that $300 Ryzen A10 two amp. But I prefer the mid-range of the Ryzen A10 over those other more expensive two amps. Now, if you go online and read comments on the internet, okay, Regarding the a Ryzen A10, people have been saying their Ryzen A10 can rival or even surpass their super expensive amp when it comes to the mid-range, when it comes to voice. The few single-ended Class A tube amps I've tried, such as the Ryzen A50, Unison Research, Simply Italy, Wilsonton R800i, Cayenne A45, do have a very nice mid-range. I would not say it's better, but there's something special about single-ended amps mid-range. So if you have a Ryzen A12 and you want to upgrade, getting a Wilsonton R800 might be the correct path instead of the Wilsonton R8. That is assuming you like the single-ended mid-range sound. So let's move on to the second point. Each tube model has its unique sound. Most people, when they buy a new component, they want more speed, more bass, more clarity, bigger sound stage, more detail, and blah, 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 okay? In the tube world, when I change tube amps, I don't look for that. But rather, I'm more curious of the flavor the tube will bring. Let me ask you, 
If I give you two amps, the Wilsonton RA and the Luxman SQN150, which one do you think most people will choose? Keep in mind, the Luxman is about 3000 bucks, the RA is about 1000. Surely most of you will think the Luxman at three times the price will be an upgrade, right? But I bet many of you will choose the Wilsonton RA over the Luxman. And the key lies in what tube is used. The Wilsonton RA uses KT88, well, or EL34, while the Luxman uses EL84. Now, EL84 has a lean and somewhat neutral presentation. Mid-range is linear and the bass is not particularly strong. It sounds less powerful than any KT88, 120, and 150 tubes I've heard. It is closer to the EL34. In fact, I would say it is a more refined EL34 tube with less power. Now, the reason why I say many of you would prefer the Wilsonton R8 over the Luxman SQN150, despite three times more expensive, is because R8 has a more V-curve presentation with a lot more bass power, like five times more bass. From my experience, people want a powerful bass. So let me tell you a story, okay? I lent Russ, one of my uh, audio buddy, a lot of my two amps. I lent him the Rysong A12 that uses ER34, the Rysong A50 that uses 300B, the Doge 10 that uses KT88, the Cayenne CS55 that uses KT88, and the Unison Research that uses ER34, and so forth. Out of all the amps, his favorite was the Luxman that uses EL84. And guess what? It just so happens his home his own reference amp, the Lieben CS300X, also uses EL84 tube. Coincidence? Or he just likes the EL84 tube sound? So if you plan to play with tubes, you want to quickly find out which tubes are your favorite and focus on getting amps that uses those tubes. Let me tell you another story. The other day, I received an amp from Fluxion that uses 6L6 tubes. Now, the reason I got it is because my audio buddy, Mr. Vintage, told me the reason he got into tubes is because of 6L6 tubes. He was so blown away by the mid-range from 6L6 tubes that it converted him from solid state to tubes. So, before I received this uh, Fluxin 6L6 amp, yeah, I was really pumped up and was expecting it to have a killer mid-range. However, as I mentioned in my other video, it is all a question of taste. If Mr. Vintage loves it so much, it is a red flag for me. Because for me to love it too, I must have the same taste as Mr. Vintage, and I don't. So, did the 6 l 6 disappoint me? Not at all. Very unique sounding mid-range. Do I like the overall presentation of the 6 l 6 too? No. I can appreciate its mid-range, but the overall presentation is too lean for me. Completely not my taste. And for those who follow me, you know I like color, while Mr. Vintage like his system neutral. Maybe that's why I like 300B tubes, and Mr. Vintage doesn't. Now, after I listened to the Fluxian tube amp, I brought it over to Mr. Vintage place, and he loves it. So is the tube amp good or not? A question of taste. If you like the 6L6 sound, this Fluxian tube amp is fantastic. All right, so let's finish today's video by going back to the Wilsonton R800i. Why am I excited about it? First, it is a class A single-ended design and I like mid-range from this kind of amp because I listen mostly to vocal. Second, it uses 805 tubes and I've never heard 805 tubes before. What is its sound characteristic and strengths? I'm curious. Is it closer to tubes that are great for vocals, like the 845 tubes? Or is it dynamic like the KT150 tubes? Finally, the Wilsonton R800 outputs 48 watts, so it pretty much can drive all my speakers. In short, will this amp have the single-ended Class A mids and at the same time have good dynamics? Well, we will find out in my upcoming Wilsonton R800i video. So, today's video is just to give you something to think about if you're considering buying a tube amp, okay? I know many of you rely on YouTubers to choose your next two amps, and I'm hoping to, to give you a bit more information so that you can make better informed decisions. When 
I read some of the comments from people shopping for a tube M. You know, I can see some of them are lost. <laughs> it's like someone buying a car for the first time and he doesn't know that there are sport car, sports car, Jeep and SUV. He thinks all cars are the same because they have four wheels and the only difference is the price. Well, obviously not. So next time when you see a video on the Tube M, yeah, pay attention to the three things I mentioned. And with that, I'll see you next time.